development effort estimation. So estimating RPA projects is a highly complex activity as many challenges could arise in development. And you know, there's really the possibility to deep dive into a process prior to development to a level that enables a fully accurate estimation to be provided. So an estimate is an estimate, but we try our best. And um, some guidelines to follow when estimating the workflow to you know, be as accurate as possible, first and foremost is um, the effort estimation is done in the anal analysis phase before any development is started, uh, as the process will need to be fully and thoroughly understood first, obviously. This means working together with the BAs, project managers, SMEs to get a complete picture of the complexity. Next, uh, we have a high level breakdown of the process is required for very large processes. The first breakdown should be by logical components, but for smaller processes, the breakdown can go to the SAML file level. Any potential challenges should be identified by tackling the most complex parts of the automation, which is usually done using Studio. And this doesn't mean getting into building workflows, but to test and understand what is working and um, you know, and what requires more complex techniques to be automated. So just to get a sense of it. For instance, we would need to see how reliable are the selectors and the applications used. Um, if you know dealing with Citrix or image automation, you know, how the more difficult steps can be automated. And when estimating, it's never about how many steps or screens we have in our applications, but rather it is the complexity of the applications and business rules that greatly affect development effort. And then exception handling is the theme that we've um, again and again brought up. So local exception handling needs to be incorporated for complex scenarios and for business rule exceptions. Um, we, we, we often require rollback actions to be implemented. Um, another factor is the knowledge level of the RPA developers involved, make sure time is also included for configuring um, orchestrator and creating any dashboards that might be needed for reporting. And then um, apart from development, um, you know, counting the unit testing and functional testing, um, additional changes requested after the PPD sign up, um, it should not be considered in the original effort estimation. Rather, in, in cases um, when these requests are made, additional time should be added. And then um, for larger processes, multiple developers would likely be working together on the same project. Um, so as the headcount increases, there may be reduced efficiency in using everyone. So some level of diminishing returns should be assumed there. So as you can see, there are many points in, in this list that are, that are hard to quantify. And so this is why RPA projects are hard to you know, estimate in terms of development effort. Um, so as a result, you know, additional time should always be factored in for unforeseen challenges. So we typically um, put in 30% more, like after we come up with the estimate, we just automatically add 30% more as a cushion um, but this varies when, when the level of uncertainty rises or, or, or falls. So like if you're estimating a process going in, you already know there are parts of it that um, there's a lot of uncertainty that you don't know yet upfront, then you may need to factor in more additional time after you come up with your initial estimation number. So we'll go through a couple of exercises today to, um, to try you know, estimating efforts, for example. So, this is for, um, for an ACME process that generates yearly report for vendors, uh, which we automated as part of the RPA developer advanced training. Um, so some of you might have done this. Um, since we're you know, technically, technically already familiar, somewhat familiar with this process, um, so it should make the estimation easier. So it's a fairly simple process, as you can see, a straightforward flowchart. Um, Let's assume that we have decided on a scalable solution using an orchestrator queue. So we have two sub-processes, uh, dispatcher and performer, like we mentioned earlier. Um, so we're using two applications, Acme System 1 and Excel. And the process is linear, 
and fairly simple. So the complexity is low, um, just a few steps in a linear way. And there's, um, but but there is a bit of difficulty in downloading reports and dealing with temporary files. So that's uh, that that would be something that when you first explored process testing a little bit of how things work, how, how the applications work, you will find that out and that you can factor that in in the estimation. Um, so in this case, we have tested the integration with Acme System 1 and it's working very well. So no special need for handling exceptions, um, just the typical standard handling in the framework is enough as the process is not complex. So we can already begin eliminating um, SAML files by counting the navigation files, open and closed files, downloading and creating the report files and upload report file. So um, we're estimating that we're netting uh, around 15 SAML files. So this doesn't have to be an exact number, but usually um, during the estimation um, stage, you try to get a sense of when the solution is complete, how many SAML files, how many workflows would be part of it. So in this case, based on the steps here, we're thinking we need um, maybe around 15 SAML files or close. And then if we can reuse some components, um, this will reduce time as well. Um, but in this case, since this is such a simple process, let's assume we need to develop everything and there's not some existing reusable components we can leverage. So we can use the estimates in this table here. For the dispatcher, um, two days for the entire sub process. And then for, for the performer, and so the dispatcher will do the login, adding um, transaction items to two. And then the performer, um, the in initialization um, should take one day to do the init. And then the report management, um, let's say two days, and the navigation one day. So that would be all the steps that the performer do. And then we allocate three days for integration um, of the components and functional testing um, for both the dispatcher and performer. So, um, and no special dashboards are needed for this process. So no time added there. So at the end, after we get an initial total, we add 30% more to get to our final number. Um, so with that, you know, allocation and, and calculation will, will estimate it takes 12 days of effort to complete this process. So that's kind of the thought process there. Um, any, any questions? Okay, so if no question, um, let's all try it. So. We'll look at, um, here's another estimation example on a process that is a little bit more complex. Um, it's not as linear. There's a decision point um, somewhere in the middle. So for this process, first, we will use the same scalable solution with queues, um, just like the previous one. We will have two subprocesses, um, dispatcher and performer. And this time we have three applications that we're using instead of two, so we're using um, Acme System 1, Acme System 3, and PDF Reader. So you can just, um, just think that, that there are three applications that the process will touch on. Um, and the process also has more business rules. Uh, so we set the process complexity to medium. And then assuming we've already tested the integration from Studio to um, Acme System 1 for the previous process, so there should be no surprises there. And then when, assuming when we test the ECB system three, we found some challenges in the reliability of the selectors. Um, so it seems that application was not that well built for, for the system three. So we need to create some reusable components in both system one and system three, and we will reuse some components previously created. So you can just have that assumption in mind as you estimate. And then one important aspect is a few moments later. Let's go over what we have as you know, part of the training material model answer. <laughs> but um, but uh, you know, as always, estimation. You know, until we actually get to um, really doing, really doing it. You know, experimenting with with the system, starting development. Um, there's really 
I, I can't say the, the answer that I have is like the most accurate, most correct answer. It's all just an estimate, but I'll go over the thought process and then um, we'll go from there. So the answer I have here is um, total estimation is 22 days. Um, and if we're using two developers, uh, we're saying 24 days. So, you know, between 22 to 24 days, that's um, the, the rough ballpark here. And let, um, let's go through the thought process here. Um, so we're thinking for the dispatcher, we will reuse components. So let's just allocate one day. And then for the performer, for initialization, we will reuse components from system one, but also create some for system three. And the PDF processing is, is demanding. And we have a couple of invoice templates that require regular expressions for data extraction, so three days. Um, Navigation boat systems will require two days while searching for the check in system three will need four days due to you know, the identify challenges and overhead for creating reusables. And then we allocate five days for integration and functional testing, um, factoring in the additional 30% uh, um, leads to a total of 22 days. Um, and let's say if we assign two developers on this project, we can you know, increase the total number of mandates to 24 and it can be completed really in 12 days by the two developers if they're working um, you know, together uh, and overlapping their timeline. So, so yeah, that's the rough estimate based on you know, initial assessment of, of the PD this process. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for upcoming content on how to start or build a career in tech, how to automate using low code RPA, how to build real time low code data pipelines, and other tech content. Visit us at uipath.com to learn more.